In this video, we're going to continue working on our immutable linked list. So we had gotten a certain ways through. We had talked about the fact that the immutable linked list is characterized by the fact that instead of storing nodes, the nodes are actually the outer level class. And we wind up doing this with inheritance. We have two subtypes of our immutable linked list. One that represents a normal node that has a value and then the rest of the list. And then another one, which is the end of the list, a nil. We made it so that our list type extends a linear sequence. Uh, and that brought in some, some methods, some of which we had to override to make it so that we could efficiently have a head and a tail. We only had to have length and apply. We added other things, primarily for efficiency reasons. There is one problem with what we've gotten to at this point, and that is the fact that we need a different nil for every type A. In reality, we'd love to only have one nil type. Well, we could simply do that by saying object. Okay? But then we can't type it, pass in a type parameter, which means that it's not defined here. And you'll note that A is never used in the body of this, so this really wouldn't be a problem, except we have to put something here. Ideally, uh, it would be something that could work with every type. And what could work with that, theoretically, is the type of nothing. Um, this code will compile at this point, but it turns out that if we try to use it, we're going to run into some issues. To understand that, let's go ahead and let's add one method up in here. It's the method that you expect to have. Actually, well, what I want to do is I want to do a def of the cons operator, where I would cons on an element of type A. And of course, this gives me an immutable SL list of A, which would simply be a new of the cons subtype of that element and the current list. Fix our typo there. OK. So this compiles, and it might all seem fine until we try to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and open an interpreter, a REPL in here. And I should be able to do something like this. I should be able to say five cons. Actually, let's go ahead and let's do an import. Import of linked list dot underscore and that brings in things like, so my nil, oops, my nil with a capital M, I can type in. And I should be able to do something like five cons my nil. That works just fine with a regular list, but here we have a type mismatch. And the reason is because my nil requires type nothing. Uh, the way that the, the type parameters are set up here this is what is called an invariant type parameter. And what that means is that if we have different types for A, then immutable SL lists, cons, and my nil are completely unrelated. So to understand this, um, imagine you have an array of, so we have some type called oh, your, our, our classical shape type, which has circles and rectangles as subtypes. If you make an array of, of shapes, and I have a, a, I use an array of shapes someplace, so I, I pass in, I have an argument to some function that takes an array of shape. Turns out I can't pass an array of circles into that uh, because these in, uh, invariant types are, don't, Get kind of the subtyping relationships of the type parameter do not extend to the whole type. And there are reasons for, turns out array is invariant. But list is not. Uh, turns out that if you have a list of shapes, you can pass a list of circles into, into something that wants a list of shapes. That works. And the reason it works is because the list type is not invariant. It is something called covariant. And to signify this in Scala, we put a little a here. And what that will allow us to do 
is to make it so that a, an immutable SL list of circle is also a subtype of immutable SL list of shape. Now that causes this to be unhappy, and it turns out that there are certain things you can't do with covariant types. This is why it turns out arrays aren't covariant. Um, if you look at this, it says covariant type A occurs in a contrapositive position in type A of the, LM, of the value LM. Yeah, it kind of talking about the full details of covariance and contravariance goes beyond the scope of this, this series, but the issue here really comes down to this. So if I do five cons nil, so I'm working with a normal list type here, turns out that nil is, uh, is well, it's the nil type, which actually happens to be a list of none, exactly what we tried to do here. When I cons five onto it, I get a list of ints. So that was res three. Watch what happens when I take high and cons it onto res three. That actually works, okay? I am able to use the cons operator with something that isn't the same type as the list, but when I do so, it infers a new type. It actually gives me the, the super type for them. And to make that work here, I need to actually come up with some other type B. But I need to put a restriction on B. B has to be a super type of A. So we've seen previously how we could specify subtypes with the less than colon. A greater than colon specifies that something is a super type. And now, LM should be of type B, and our return type is going to be of type B. And so when we include this, Scala is going to basically figure out that, that what type B can be that is a super type of what we pass in and the type that our list is already using. Now remember, nothing is a subtype of everything. So that winds up being um, happy with any type that we use. And if we build a new interpreter that uses this modified code, I can do an import of link list dot underscore. And now I can take five cons my nil, and I get a cons of five. I can then take six cons res zero, and I get a cons with six five. I could do high const onto my res1, and that behaves just like the linked list. Now we have, instead of having a list of int, we have a list of any. Okay, so putting in the covariance and making this so that it, that it works with any super type of A gets this to behave in the way that we want. So this is almost a happy implementation. The one thing that I'd like to add is I would like to add an iterator here um, for performance reasons because the default iterator in, li in linear sequence might not be as efficient for us as we'd like. So I'm going to override the iterator method which has to make a new iterator of type A. I left out the keyword new there. And recall that iterators have to have a method called has next, which needs to be equal to something of a Boolean type, <clears throat> and a next, which gives back an A. I'll go ahead and, yeah, yeah. okay. So how are we going to get this to, to work? Well, we saw with our singly linked list, our iterator kept track of a rover that went through. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm going to have a var rover that is going to uh, start off as the current node. Now, it's tempting to type in just this here. The problem is because we are inside of this iterator, this is, uh, yeah, winds up being an iterator. So I need to specify that I want the immutable SL list. And then we get 
our rover as an immutable SL list. Okay, remember the classes that the instances themselves are the nodes here. We don't have nodes contained. Has next? Well, we have a next as long as rover is not empty. We wrote an efficient is empty in both the cons and the my nil, so that will be an efficient thing to do there. And the next method needs to do basically what it did for the singly linked list. We are going to make a temporary return variable that is the head of the rover. Now, of course, if we ever called that on nil, it would throw an exception. But hopefully people are checking has next, and so it would never happen on, on nil. Then I need to set rover equal to rover's tail and give back the rat. Our one issue here, let's see, tail, ah, because I have not overridden, okay, so I've overridden the tail and the subtypes, but I didn't specify it up here uh, to do something different. So I'm going to take this value and I'm going to explicitly specify a type on it to say that it has to be a linear sequence of A. Uh, the fact that we're inheriting from linear sequence, this is a, a linear sequence and the tail by default gives us back a linear sequence. So there's a reasonably complete implementation of a, an immutable linked list it is singly linked. It is very efficient to use a cons to append to the front because all that does is it builds a new cons node. It's basically an order one operation. Uh, things like length are not efficient. Length winds up recursing down through the entire list. Uh, the apply method is not efficient. If you're getting something that's close to the front, well, it's not too bad, but it winds up recursively walking through the entire list, so uh, at least up to the index that you want. So you shouldn't use apply. Hopefully this illustrates to you why you don't want to use apply on the built-in list type, because the built-in list type works very much like this type here. So there's what kind of our first immutable data structure looks like. And you can see that it is remarkably different than the way we built our mutable data structures. Um, in some ways it's more complex, but in a lot of ways it's actually simplified. The code is definitely shorter, in part because operations like update simply don't exist here.